Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. It is January 5th, 2024, and we have another great show for you today. First, another delay for justice in the Lori Vallow matter. Lori Vallow's old attorney in Idaho, James Archibald, he's got a new client, and once again, not a whole lot to work with. Wait until you hear about Gypsy Rhodes Blanchard's latest comments and how she is going to cash in. Best defense in a homicide case is the dead guy deserved killing. Let me give you an example. And then we have an update from our dumb criminal yesterday and then our dumb criminal of the day. Rule of thumb, never blame the girlfriend. Let's talk about it. Hi, lawyer. 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 Good day, everyone. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk. Thanks for joining us. You know the drill. Subscribe if you haven't. Like if you do. Leave me a comment below. Make sure you hit that little bell because you need to get notifications when we go live or put up new content because we were in YouTube jail and they seem to deactivate the little bell. So please hit it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, open the record and get to the first thing on the docket. Yes, justice delayed in the Lori Vallow matter. You may say, Scott, but she's been convicted. She's doing three life sentences out of Idaho. No, I'm talking about Arizona. As you may recall, she was set to start trial in early April of this year. Well, the prosecutor filed a motion uh, last week asking for the case to be declared complex and therefore basically takes it out of the normal speedy trial uh, requirements that the case be uh, tried uh, within the six month period. So the Arizona judge has deemed the case against Lori Vallow complex and that allows prosecutors and the defense attorneys more time to figure out what they're going to do. And obviously, it delays the start of the April trial schedule. And as you know, everybody is aware that uh, Lori Vallow has been convicted of killing her two children and her fifth husband's now deceased uh, wife, uh, Tammy Daybell. And now she faces a conspiracy to commit murder charges related to the death of her fourth husband and the attempted murder of her niece's ex-husband. So both of the uh, crimes in uh, Arizona were allegedly carried out by Lori Vallow's brother, Alex Cox, who coincidentally just died a few short months afterwards. And then um, Cox was also believed to be involved in the uh, deaths of seven-year-old JJ and 16-year-old Tylee there in Idaho, whose bodies were uh, found on the property of Chad Daybell, who goes to trial in April. Now, as we mentioned, and we were talking about it, we did our last live show when this came out that the prosecutors wanted to continue this trial, and a lot of the reasons were because the case in Idaho with Chad Daybell has a lot of the same witnesses that will overlap in the case of Lori Vallow in Arizona. And obviously, the uh, family of both wanted to be able to attend both trials and they shouldn't have to choose. More than likely, that case wasn't going to go to trial. If Lori Vallow had, you know, really jumped up and down, maybe she could have uh, kept that trial date. Probably be the only chance she would really have in trying to prevail. So according to the scheduling order, and you can always tell by the scheduling orders which judge was a criminal lawyer or a prosecutor before they came to the bench or a civil attorney. Well, when you take a look at this scheduling order from this judge, you can tell clearly a civil attorney, um, you know, when we're going to get together, meet and confer, uh, when we're going to discuss uh, if there's going to be any settlement. Settlement in a criminal case? All right, come on, whatever. Um, it, it's just a fancy word for more bureaucracy, more red tape, more things to make it difficult. Um, and so anyway, there's going to be another hearing scheduled for Lori Vallow in February of this year. And then the trial is set for a uh, trial call assignment on August 1. We'll see if that case will go there in uh, August. Um, speaking of Lori Vallow, remember her old attorney, James Archibald? Well, he's got another tough case. He is now the attorney for Jeremy Best, who is accused of killing his wife and son. So back in November of 2023, there was an Amber Alert that issued for Best's 10-month-old son, Zeke Best. After deputies found his wife, Callie uh, Jean Randall, shot inside their home. Now, Callie Jean Randall was reportedly also 28 weeks pregnant at the time, and her unborn baby died as a result. Jeremy Best then allegedly kidnapped his son after killing his wife. Days later, after a manhunt, police found him in a sleeping bag 
alongside the road near Idaho Falls. Zeke Best, the 10-month-old son, was found deceased near his father's car, which was located down an embankment. An autopsy report indicated that uh, the young um, boy uh, died from a wound to the neck. And like I said, who seems like the best guy to represent him? James Archibald. That's right. Who represented Lori Vallow. He is now his attorney. Well, Mr. Best pled not guilty to three counts of first-degree murder and the use of a firearm or deadly weapon during the commission of a crime. And um, this was after he was found fit or competent to stand trial. Now, it's unclear whether the prosecutors are going to seek the death penalty in the case of Mr. Best, but I think some could argue you go around killing women and children, you're certainly putting yourself in the uh, running uh, for a candidate for the death penalty penalty. We'll continue to follow that and uh, just out of curiosity, see if uh, Mr. Archibald maybe shows a little more fire in the belly than he did in the Lori Vallow case. Next, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Hey, you guys want it? We'll bring it to you, all right? And wait till you hear her most recent statement on her interview on Good Morning America and how she stands to cash in. That's right. As you know, Gypsy Rose Blanchard went from serving her 10-year sentence for second-degree murder of her admittedly abusive mother to serving fans after a life in prison. Since her short time of release, which is the day after Christmas, she has now amassed more than 10 million followers on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, the uh, Gypsy Rose, who is uh, 32, became a star thanks to the 2017 documentary called Mommy Dead and Dearest, and as she is trying to reinvent herself as a social media influencer, telling people that she wants to create change with her new platform. She has a book that is going to be released, and it's called Release Conversations on the Eve of Freedom. That comes out January 9th. And of course, don't forget that three-part Lifetime special, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, which premiered Friday. Um, she's also gained 1.2 million followers on TikTok by Saturday with a bio describing herself as a public figure and speaker, author, and an advocate for awareness of Munchausen by proxy. Now, obviously, the Munchausen by proxy syndrome is the psychological disorder in which the parents exaggerate or make up an illness of the children to get attention or sympathy. And I went and looked it up and wanted to find out how many cases, how much awareness must be brought to Munchausen by proxy. And I found a Cleveland report that was uh, put out a couple of years ago, and it says about 1% of the people have a Munchausen syndrome, and two in every 100,000 children are thought to be victims of Munchausen by proxy. Although it's unclear how exactly they came up with that figure, since, well, it's hard to say whether somebody is really sick or not, and somebody finally decides, oh my gosh, somebody is actually faking it. Or you could just be a huckster looking for sympathy, right? The little people standing on the side of the road, oh, please help me, please help me. Um, so she looking like she's going to make a ton of money. She could get up to $100,000 for speaking gigs. Huh. Now, I would think, like when I have clients, or man, when I get out of prison, I'm going back to the old neighborhood. And you say, well, you maybe need to go, go do something new. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if this is going to end well. I really don't. I wish her the best, but I don't think it's going to go well. I hope I'm wrong. Gypsy Rose did give a uh, first interview uh, with ABC, and um, she, when asked a question about whether you know she really felt bad about her mom being killed and what have you, she stated that it was the only way out uh, from this, uh, suffering of the, uh, Munchausen by proxy abuse that she endured. And she stated that she didn't really want her mom dead. She just wanted out of the situation. She thought that was the only way in which to do that. So that's what she told Good Morning America. She also said she didn't think her mom was a monster, but, uh, despite the years of abuse, she had lots of demons, she, uh, stated, and, uh, she was struggling with all those demons. Anyway, obviously, she recounted the fact that she was basically told by her mom that she was sick and dying and had to be in a wheelchair and had feeding tubes and what have you, and even though she was actually just fine. But the real question I thought came when uh, the uh, host 
asked, what about Nicholas Godijan, her boyfriend, who remains behind bars serving a life sentence for being the one that actually stabbed mom, Dee Dee, because Gypsy Rose convinced him that this is the only way out and that he needed to do this. Yeah, that was the interesting part. What do you think about that? And obviously they can't have any contact, but you would think, you know, maybe she could have somebody, maybe put some money on his books for him, don't you think? Try to help the guy out? I mean, she he did kill her mother. Well, like I said, when she was asked whether she thought it was fair uh, that uh, she was allowed to now be out and Nicholas go to John remain incarcerated, well, Gypsy Rose responded pretty bluntly. I'm sure we both have a lot of regrets. All I can say is I did my time. He is doing his time for his part, and I wish him well on his journey. Now, one could say he wouldn't have been on this journey but for her convincing. Like I said, you think maybe she'd, with all this new cash influx, that she would maybe want to get an attorney, maybe for some post-conviction, maybe for some mitigation, reduce sentence, clemency. Apparently not. Is it all about Gypsy Rose, perhaps? Well, we'll see. Like I said, she's got all of these movie projects going on, her book deal, and like I said, oh, don't forget the Lifetime special that starts today. And um, like I said, experts now say that she could earn up to $100,000 per social media post through endorsement deals, brand partnerships, and speaking engagements. Huh. I wonder which brands out there would like a... Uh, woman convicted of conspir conspiring to kill their mother endorsing their products. Huh. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe crime talk? I don't know. I don't think so. Even I have a line in the sand, ladies and gentlemen. All right, next. Any defense attorney will tell you when the law isn't on your side and there's somebody's dead, the best defense is the dead guy deserved killing. And let me give you an example. Some people are calling him a Texas vigilante. Others are calling him a Texas hero. But he killed a robber in a Houston restaurant last year. And guess what? The citizens that were on the grand jury decided he's a hero, not a vigilante. Now, the shooter was said to be protecting everyone in the restaurant. And he struck uh, Eric Eugene Washington um, nine times with uh, one bullet hitting him kind of execution style in the head. But why did Mr. Washington get shot by this man? Well, he had entered the El Rancho Taqueria on January 5th while he was uh, flashing what appeared to be a firearm. Now, it turned out later to be plastic, but hey, you do stupid things, you find out, right? Anyway, uh, the customer then shot Mr. Washington as he attempted to flee the scene and it was all caught on video footage. Like I said, the Texas grand jury returned a no-bill indictment against the shooter, meaning that no criminal charges will be filed against him. And the district attorney, they're okay with that. Because in Texas, a shooting is justified in self-defense, defense of others, and in defense of property. A lot of states don't have that property part. So needless to say, the man was in fear for his life and his friend's life, and um, the man acted to protect everyone in the restaurant. Now, apparently the event has been somewhat traumatic to the man because obviously taking another's life shouldn't be taken lightly, but he did it. Now, there were also about 10 customers in the restaurant when Mr. Washington entered wearing the black ski mask and gloves and started to rob all of the diners. Many scattered and gave up their possessions in fear that Mr. Washington, like I said, who was in there with a firearm or thought to be a firearm, was threatening people. And of course, you know, when you rob people, you run the risk of getting shot when people think you have a gun. But of course, now the deceased individual's mother, Miss Goodman, said that the shooter should have stopped firing as soon as there was no longer a threat. His mom says, if you had to kill him, I can deal with that. I can do grips with that. He did something wrong. I understand that. But for him to you know, be shot four times in the back leaving, and when he falls down, he shoots him four more times. He abused him. Yeah, and he, and he did him good. He did him good. Let's just put him that way. Anyway, Mr. Washington already had a lengthy rap sheet, hence going on to the dead guy deserved killing. He was on bond for a recent domestic violence incident uh, where he attacked his girlfriend, and he previously just spent six years in prison for an aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon starting to notice a pattern here. And uh, court records also confirm that Mr. Washington was released on parole in 2021 for this aggravated robbery and deadly weapon for which he had served 15 years behind bars. 
Mr. Washington had been convicted back in 2015 in connection with the murder of a 52-year-old man um, who was the owner of a Boost mobile cell phone store who was fatally shot in the back during a robbery. He was paroled in 2021 after only six years. Now, some of the uh, victim's uh, sons uh, called Mr. Washington uh, evil, a criminal that took joy in harassing and robbing innocent people. A family member of a victim uh, from Mr. Washington's numerous victims uh, called Mr. Washington an evil criminal that took joy in harassing and robbing innocent families. Well, and now he's dead. So, like I said, don't go around shooting people, but if you do, make sure the law protects you from being prosecuted if you're protecting yourself, other people, or your property. Check with your local jurisdiction. All right, a quick update on the dumb criminal from yesterday. So the man who uh, looked like Jimmy the Superfly Snooka uh, leaping over the bench to attack the Las Vegas judge, well, he was supposed to have court uh, yesterday, and he refused to show up in court. Deborah Redden uh, was set to appear before a judge to hear the new charges related to his attack against uh, Judge Holthus. And um, Mr. Holthus uh, refused to uh, come to court, so the judge refused to increase his bond. The prosecutors want his bond increased to a no-bond hold, although now it's currently set at $42,000. But the judge didn't feel comfortable since Mr. Redden didn't show up to court. Now, the good news is the judge and the uh, deputy were taken to the uh, hospital, and uh, they were released uh, with uh, just some minor injuries. Needless to say, the judge is a little shaken up. And um, the uh, courthouse is going to uh, try to figure out some additional measures so that uh, defendants can't uh, charge the judge. That's a bad, bad thing. Um, kind of it's, a, it's, it's, it's an attack on the justice system, if you want to have your way with words, I guess, so to speak. So we can't have that. And then finally today, our dumb criminal of the day. So everybody knows the TSA scans all your bags when you go to the through security, unless, of course, you fly, fly uh, private where there is no TSA. Anyway, the TSA collects large amounts of contraband items throughout the years, which could include firearms, bullets, knives, water bottles, excessively large hand lotion bottles. Thank God TSA is there to protect us. Anyway, some uh, TSA officers found 17 bullets concealed inside a disposable baby diaper at uh, New York's LaGuardia Airport. Officers pulled um, the uh, clean diaper from the passenger's carry-on bag after it triggered an alarm when it went through the X-ray machine. Now, the passenger initially claimed he didn't know how the bullet-filled diaper ended up in his bag. Later, though, he suggested his girlfriend may have put it there. Well, the TSA um, identified the passenger as a man from Arkansas, um, who was ticketed uh, for a flight to Chicago's Midway Airport, but did not disclose his name. The uh, Port Authority cited him for unlawful possession of 9 millimeter ammunition. Um, his girlfriend was not charged. So it could happen. Don't get me wrong. I, I got a story. Maybe I'll tell you one day. Sometimes you forget things. It happens. Anyway, in the diaper, I can maybe kind of see maybe the girlfriend is trying to set him up, take these diapers, it's yours but no gun, maybe trying to get him in trouble. Maybe the girlfriend was trying to get rid of him. But here's the thing. For this unidentified man from Arkansas to actually blame his girlfriend, oh my gosh, he should have just taken the rap, maybe even gone to jail or prison for that. Can you imagine the grief that this guy is going to get for the next entire life that he has with this woman because they have a child together? Oh, remember that one time you tried to blame me for the bullets in the diaper? I can hear it. it's never going to end. Anyway, unidentified man from Arkansas, you are a dumb criminal of the day. And do what I do. Make sure you clean out, you go through all the pockets before you go through TSA. You just never know. All right, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time on Crime Talk. And remember, the Constitution matters. Mm -hmm.